Here we have a Dash 1 WPC power driver board. It has the flipper power enable cube and some associated relay or circuitry around here. And this one came in with the complaint that there was no five volts. So the first thing that I noticed right away is that one, two, three, four caps have been changed in probably an attempt to uh, ward off um, future failures. I am wholly against this, as I've said many times. C5 is the only capacitor that makes any difference in the five volts, well, of these four. C5 is a factor, C4 is a factor, C2 is not, but C2 always leaks, or eventually leaks, and then severs the traces out and you don't get the proper operation from the zero cross circuit or your uh, some other functions of the board. So I'll replace one, two, three caps routinely, and I'll also replace the ground, AC power in, headers, general illumination out, general illumination in, and this is the DC power out to 512 and ground to the MPU board and other boards. And then this is AC power in for the unregulated 12 volts. So I'll replace all those connectors. I'll wash up this board and get rid of all this grunge here. So let's see if my suspicion is true here. I have my meter set to continuity. And I've done so many of these that I can tell I should have continuity from this side of the capacitor to the bridge, and I do. What about this side to this side? No joy. So this is going to be the root cause of the lack of five volts. You can also check the connections, because somebody has replaced this bridge rectifier here too, connections from the AC side of the bridge to the general illumination zero cross circuit and at least those are working. So let's get into it and get this baby repaired. Back with this board and I pulled the cap cleanly out using my gigantic JVC iron tip that allows me to heat both pads at the same time and then you can gently remove the cap. I'm gonna be able to reuse this cap, I believe. Um, I used to install a solder stitch, what I used to call it. It's more like a wire stitch, but nowadays, I do this. The first thing I do is enlarge the hole to the size of a rivet that I'm gonna put in there. Looks fairly destructive, but believe me, this is the best case because I'm replacing the entire through hole. And then I get one of my rivets by yay big. I always put it through this pick because I've got sausage fingers and it's hard to install otherwise and just slide it on through there and you take your iron and you tack solder that rivet down to the copper trace Pull a lot of solder around that that hole is good to go on the flip side of this board then this is what you've got coming out is the other side of the rivet now some folks will clinch these rivets down uh, I haven't been doing that because I think it just makes it easier if you ever have to take the cap out again uh, to not clinch that. That may be true, maybe not, not sure. But I'm going to do the same thing on this side of the board is I'm going to scratch off the solder mask here and here and I'm going to solder that side of the rivet to these traces and then reinstall the capacitor. All right, cap reinstalled and I added some tiny wires to go to loop around this side of the rivet and come down on the traces here and I soldered that all together. It's kind of a nasty looking solder job, but um, it does get the job done. And most importantly, let's test. We do have continuity from both sides of the cap to the respective legs on bridge rectifier two. What else on this board? Somebody has reflowed the solder on the LM323K. I'll remove that and put some flux on there and reflow that. And then of course I've got three other caps to worry about plus the headers. So onward and upward. And here is the power driver board that had the ripped through hole at C5. And I have repaired that. We have it on the bench now to complete our testing. You can see that we've got two LEDs lit there, one in the center, and then these two 
on the left also lit. These two are line level voltage detection LEDs and they're pretty much meaningless and can be ignored. But what I like to say, say is that you need to have the five LEDs that form a bow tie lit on the power driver board. So let's put it into test and test all the functions. It's delivering about 4.92 according to this. It's really about 4.96 because that voltmeter is not very good. Test the solenoids. We can skip all the switch test stuff because that doesn't have a thing to do with the solenoid driver board. And we're gonna see that all 16 solenoid circuits are operating correctly. Excellent. I'm gonna skip flasher test for now. And we'll pick all those up at the same time. But let's test all five of the general illumination dimming circuits and they're working just fine. Lamps and flashers at the same time. working perfectly and that is it this driver board <clears throat> is now good to go c2 wasn't leaking but i replaced them anyway because they will leak eventually this driver board is a great example of why you can't visually inspect fuses look at that one in the center looks like it's not working it is that's a perfectly good fuse thank you so much for sending it